Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and my wife said I should do lunges to stay in shape. That would be a big step forward. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called Empire Shall Fall, a turn-based, pixelated strategy game developed by Weird Penguin Games and published by Weird Penguin Games and Electronic Sheep Games, released not in early access and selling for $13. So, as I'm sure all of you out there are wondering, what is this game? It kind of looks like Fire Emblem or some of those older War Tale games, whatever they were called, right? In its map movement style, its options, its graphics, and even its combat. Well, okay, it looks a lot like Fire Emblem to me at least, but you know, that's because that's the only one that I've ever really played that looks like this. Anyway, the game doesn't really have much of a story per se. You have the prologue, which teaches you the game, and then it has two storylines, the Black Empire and the Blue League. Pick one. Go on a journey following and commanding troops of whichever faction you choose and just enjoy yourself, I guess. As far as I can tell, there isn't really much of a story here or interesting characters or cutscenes or anything that made Fire Emblem so iconic. But regardless, I was very much interested in the art style and gameplay, so I decided to take a look anyway. But now, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, and up first is the positives. So, the first positive I really liked was the price tag. I mean, when you look at a game like this, you're thinking maybe $10, maybe $15 at most, and we're talking if you just look at its face value, and I'd consider that appropriate. So, when I saw a $13 price tag, I was immediately and pleasantly surprised. They know how much their game is worth, and they're not charging more, and that's always a good sign. The next positive I want to talk about is the art design and graphics. Now, I personally love this design, so I might be a bit biased in its graphical structure, but regardless, I still wanted to make mention of it. There's a surprising amount of attention to detail, lots of great color contrast, and overall just a pleasant look to almost every fabric of the game's art. So, it was pleasant to watch the entire time. Next up would have to be the sound and the music. The music is decent enough, I suppose. I mean, it's about what you'd expect, but what I really enjoyed here was the sound effects. The explosions, the pinging of bullets on armor, the gunshot sounds. They all sounded really great and thematic, as well as realistic and dramatic. A pleasant assault on your eardrums. And, and let's, you know, let's be honest here, when you're playing a game, you know, graphics are nice, but the sound is what really sells it. So, they did, they did a good job here in terms of, of sound design. Next up, I want to go into the stability and the tutorial. And, you know, they're... They're pretty good. Uh, the tutorial has a story, it has basic instructions, and despite not really needing a tutorial for a game like this, which, you know, because it's pretty self-explanatory, they still deigned to give us one, which was really nice of them, as well as thorough. I learned all I needed to, uh, quickly and easily enough, which allowed me th to then focus on its limited story and the actual gameplay during the tutorial, and was never once confused or annoyed. As for the stability, the game ran smooth as butter, with not a single glitch or error or bug to be found, which was also really nice, meaning while playing it, it also felt smooth and felt good to play. And last but not least for the positives is the gameplay itself. Normally with games like these, it's got the same basic dynamic, right? You're given a certain number of troops per battle, and you need to use strategy and intelligence to competently outmaneuver your opponents, troops, and either steal the castle from them or kill all the enemies. Now, while this game does have that here, it also has a lot more included. There's troop merging, so you can take two wounded units and combine them together, which not only gives you a fully healed troop, but combines their veterans veterancy, thus making them more competent in battle. There's buildings that you can capture, which serve different purposes. There are factories that you can capture, which you will then allow you to build supply trucks or tanks. There's barracks that you can capture, which will supply you with a bunch of different types of infantry. There are abandoned warehouses you can capture with each turn, will provide you with funds so you can then build more troops. Some missions have objectives like kill this giant evil monster with a force field over it. Utilize long range rocket artillery trucks to bombard it once you get its shields down. There are supply trucks that not only refill ammo for your troops, because yes, your troops also have ammo, but those same supply trucks can also load up your slow moving infantry and carry them farther and faster to get them into the fight sooner. So, there's a lot of really cool and interesting intuitive ideas added to this typical turn-based pixelated tactics game, and it was a lot of fun to discover the different things and plan out my own strategies on the go in each battle, due to the new mechanic of capturing buildings and building my own army while I'm in the midst of this level. There's obviously the slightly supernatural aspect, as these random monsters will just appear and force you to do battle with them, so that's cool too. Not to mention there are a bunch of different unit types, all of which have different functions and come with their own pros and cons. Cavalry are mainly used as scouts, marauders are infantry with grenade launchers, and then you've got your mortars and your rocket artillery trucks to destroy your enemies from afar. But, and there's more, I, I could go on more, there's more units than that, but that's just what I'm going to mention right now. And that's not even all. Each level allows you to add limited upgrades to specific unit types to give them further buffs depending on what you choose so you can literally cultivate each battle to suit the needs you think are best for your army or your playstyle or maybe just for that level. 
So, to make a long story short, there's a, really a lot of interesting components to the gameplay here that you don't normally see in other games, and it was a lot of fun to explore and experience. And I'm not going to tell you everything about it either. If you want to know more about it, you're going to have to go and explore it for yourself. That's part of the fun. Uh, oh, and I almost forgot, it has hot seat multiplayer, and if you don't know what that means, it basically means that you and a buddy could play together on one computer. You could fight each other or work together in the game, so that's a really cool aspect too, especially for such a cheap price. Alright, so that's all I got for the positives, and up next is the negatives. However, before we get into those, please grant me a moment of your time not related to the game. By the way, if I've been sounding a bit off in this video, I am feeling very sick, I don't feel very good, and I still wanted to put out a, some content though, so I apologize if I sound a little bit off, it's because I'm just not feeling good. Anyway, I've been doing YouTube for a very long time, and I've put in a lot of work and grown as much as I have in such a long time. Now that I have more of an audience, I'm hoping that all of you out there can help me grow bigger faster. Please support the growth of my channel by hitting the like button and the subscribe button. It only takes a second to do and it costs you nothing, but it'll help me out a lot. Leaving a comment is nice too, and I always try to respond to as many of them as I can, but most importantly, spread the word and share my channel online. I mean, the only way you get views is if you already have them on YouTube, which sucks, but that means that I really need to rely on my audience to help me grow. So please consider helping out my channel and helping me grow today. Thank you. Now then, on to the negatives. I don't really have a lot of negatives, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll see what I can do, just to be fair. I suppose the first negative is the overall writing. It's average, maybe below average, it's kind of annoying to be honest. Some of it just feels cringe or stereotypes for the sake of stereotypes. To be honest, I couldn't care less about the story after I got into it. I, I was pretty much just skimming through it so I could get to the fun gameplay because it was just boring and unoriginal, not really fun or interesting at all. But it's a really damn shame because imagine a game like this but with the same kind of development and funds as Fire Emblem or Pokemon or whatever. What an incredible game that would be. So the overall story and lore and dialogue is just kind of bland, boring and disappointing. The next negative I have is the lack of scale and the overall scope of the game. It looks great, it plays great, but the longer you play it, the more you realize how little substance is actually there. No real cutscenes, no voice acting, no interesting story, no choices, no unique characters. Hell, even the veterancy mechanic only applies to the units in the battle at that time. Come next battle, they're all back to basically, basically being just random normal basic units, which means it doesn't matter if you sacrifice your units as long as you complete the objective. Don't get me wrong, this isn't, this isn't the worst thing if you're just looking for a mindless, pointless strategy game, but for me, story is the best part of any game. I suppose that's just the writer in me, but regardless, whenever I see a great game with great ideas and innovation, I'm always hoping for a great story to go along with it and definitely some great characters I can get attached to. The length of play is the next negative. Now, obviously, I haven't played it all the way through, and uh, I don't have any idea what its actual length of play is. I just hope that it's longer than the prologue. See, I did, you know, the, the prologue had six missions, and I completed all of them in under an hour. So, that means that if both campaigns have 12 missions and the same scope and size and scale of the prologue, then, you know, 12 missions would be, like, what, a little under two hours? So, if you did that for both, that'd be a little under four hours of gameplay? Now obviously I'm putting a lot of, you know, assumptions here and I'm, I'm making a lot of, I'm taking a lot of liberties, but if that happened to be the case, that would mean the game is fairly short. Now, of course, as I said, this is all speculation on my side, so you can't really call it a negative, but it is a concern of mine that the game might not be very long. But yeah, that's all I've got for the negatives, so, and, and honestly, they aren't even really that bad. Maybe a little annoying, but nothing too awful, especially when you think about the price of the game and the quality of the gameplay. I mean, the gist of this game is that it's a quick, tactical, turn-based war game involving a fictional world with pixelated graphics. If that sounds fun to you, then have no fear. The game works really well, plays really well, and it is a lot of fun. However, if you were looking for maybe a more interesting, diverse world with interesting, fun, exciting story or lore or interesting characters to go along with it, you know, then look elsewhere because this game just isn't going to give you that. So, the choice is up to you guys out there. I personally really liked this game, I had a ton of fun while I was playing it. Sure, it is lacking in some areas, but in others it's pretty. It's a pretty great casual little tactical war game. It's fun and engaging and worth its asking price, so if you want to give it a shot, then great! I hope you enjoy it, I think you should. But, that's all the time I got for this video everybody. Thanks so much for watching, with a special thanks to, to you out there who stuck around to the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.